my last few videos, I've talked about how to set goals for your year and how to make a plan and organize that plan in a way that will work for you so you'll be successful and be closer to your ideal self. In this video, I'll show you the goal that I set and how I planned it out so that it'll work for me and help me be successful. Hopefully this will be a great example for you of what you could do for your plan. YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we talk about luxury living on a budget. Now this video has a lot to do with the budget part and the luxury living is part of that too because one of the luxurious things that we can do for ourselves is set and reach goals. My goal for 2020 has to do with finances and saving and I've decided to do that by going on a low buy year challenge. In this video I'll explain what a low buy is, how I plan to do that, and how I came up with that plan, how I've organized it into this planner right here so that I can help myself stay on track and be successful and have a lot more money in savings at the end of the year. If you're interested in videos like this about organization and bettering your life, or if you're interested about videos on luxury handbags and accessories, which is the bulk of my channel, then please make sure you are subscribed and you hit the bell notification icon so you are notified every time I post a new video and you don't miss anything. Okay, let's get started. What is a low buy year? Have you ever heard of this? There's something called a no buy year and a low buy year. There are quite a few videos on YouTube about it, which is where I learned about it. And what it means basically is you are limiting your spending very much. On a no buy year, people have different rules for the no buy and the low buy, and that's part of what I'll show you is my rules for my low buy year. But basically on a no buy year, you don't buy anything at all. Some people buy nothing, like nothing, not even necessities. They figure out how to barter for those or get them in other ways. But most people, I think, buy only necessities and they really limit what those necessities are. On a low buy year, you have a little more wiggle room. A lot of people in the videos that I've watched when they're talking about a low buy year, they have a particular motivation for wanting to do this. For me, it's savings, but for a lot of people, it's that they feel they have a shopping addiction and most of them have to do with makeup and clothes, at least the ones that I've seen. So there are people who have a ton of makeup, they can't stop buying makeup, so they're going on a low buy to limit their makeup buys. Another point of a low buy is to make yourself use what you have. So like with makeup or clothing, instead of buying more, you use what you have, you figure out what you love. So basically it's a way to control your spending, be able to save more, and sort of reassess your spending habits and fall in love again with the things that you already have that you were so excited to get in the first place. So to start my low buy year, I started by doing research, watching all these videos to figure out what it was about, figure out how other people did their low buy years, figure out what challenges they faced, what rules they set for themselves, and to hear the outcomes for them. I watched those, I kept certain things in mind, I noticed patterns across different videos, different people's stories, and I made notes on things that I might want to include in my low buy year. From those notes that were both digital and on paper, I combined those into a digital format, I made an outline of what I wanted to put in my planner, so basically all the headlines, or what I want to put on each page, sort of a table of contents. And then I started fleshing some of those out in more detail. So I knew I wanted to have a section on what I can and can't buy, but I wanted to flesh that out a little more. So in my outline, I did sections on what I'm allowed to buy, what I'm not allowed to buy, what I can replace, and what I can buy in moderation or with rules, restrictions. So I came up with as much as I could on my my outline, the what's on each page, and then I started transferring it into this journal. And by the way, this is a journal I already had, so instead of going out and buying a new one, I'm using something that I already had at home. No buy. It didn't involve making a purchase. Plus, it's really cute with the dogs on it, so it's something I want to pick up and use. All right, I'm not gonna show you every page in here, and I only have the first 20 or so pages filled right now, 
the rest will be kind of a workbook throughout the year. But I start by having a section of all these pages that I want to reference throughout the year. So my first page is just title page and I always in my notebooks I put my name and my email so if it ever gets lost somebody can find me. The next page is the table of contents and I numbered the bottom of each page so I can reference the table of contents and if I'm looking for something specific instead of having to flip through each page. That just makes it a little easier on me. This first page here, and I'm not gonna show you every page because there's sensitive information on some of the pages, but this first page, I wrote out like a journal entry, basically why I'm doing this. I called it financial goals, but why I want to do this low by year. What's my motivation? What do I feel like I've done not so well in the past? What I want to improve on? what I am doing well and want to keep doing. All of that is listed in that journal entry. The next page has things that I want to save for. So I want to build my emergency funds. I have a surgery that is upcoming at some point and I have to save money up for that, for the deductible. Yay. Uh, car repairs. My car is getting older. It's going to start needing repairs. I also need to save for a new car at some point. I will drive the car I have until it dies, but then I'm going to need a new one. I've, I tried to think of everything that could come up in the future that I need to be saving for, especially larger expenses. So at some point we won't be in this apartment anymore. We're going to stay here as long as we can, but at some point we'll end up moving. So I need to have money for a deposit on another apartment and money for moving expenses. I need to have money in case of loss of employment. I need to have savings for animal health care. On the next two pages, these have some numbers that I'm not going to show you. I have all my sources of income and approximately what I get from each. Some of those vary. Underneath that, that's when I can show you. So I had my sources of income listed up here. Underneath that, I have this calendar, a year at a glance, where I have all my paydays circled. And I get paid every two weeks, which means that twice a year I get a month that has three paychecks and I consider those two extra paychecks to be extra money. So I indicated that on my calendar too, and the next page has savings. So it's got information about my retirement accounts and also my savings plan. So for example, this is something that I picked up on, a, on YouTube, it is a great tip, I think, if you're trying to save. The tip I picked up was every Friday put $20 into your savings account. I think a strategy that would work better for me is every paycheck put $40 into the account, and I actually upped that to 50. So by the end of the year, if I'm doing that every paycheck all year, then I'll have $1,300 in my savings account just for moving 50 per paycheck. I also listed other sources of extra money throughout the year. So like those two extra paychecks, I plan to put those instead of spending them like I usually do plan to put those directly into savings, the full amount. My tax return, right into savings. I also get a stipend twice a year, it's not very much, like $300 twice a year for teaching yearbook, directly into savings. So with all of that, by the end of the year, that'll give me an extra $6,000 plus and savings if I stick to it and actually follow the plan. The next two pages I won't show you, also I'll just tell you about. One has my bills like rent, utilities, uh, my cell phone bill, the monthly fee that I pay to have Photoshop and the Adobe Suite on my computer, Amazon Prime, things like that. I also figured out and wrote down on this page what bills I could cut out, what monthly expenses I could cut. So like Hulu, I canceled my Hulu account and I canceled two subscription boxes that I was subscribed to and that gave me an extra $50 a month just by canceling those things. So that can go toward other expenses that I have or right into savings. The next page has a list of debts. So this is student loans. I've told you sometimes when I purchase handbags that I'll use a firm which is a lending system online where you can set it up to pay the amount off in three months, six months, 12 months. Sometimes with bigger purchases, they'll do 24 months. And I do have a few of those that I haven't paid off yet because of Christmas and all of that. So I have those listed. I have the lender, the due date, the payment, the debt, the limit if there's like a credit limit, the APR if it has one, how much the interest would be if I just made minimum payments, if there's a yearly fee for anything. Sometimes there are credit cards that have yearly fees, you know. If I only paid the minimum, how long would it take to pay it off? If I only paid the minimum, how much interest would I end up paying? And then I have a column for the order that I'll pay the debts off, a column to check off when they are paid off, and a column 
them to check off when I have paid off and closed an account so that I cannot use it again. And the way that I pick the order to pay things off, for the most part, I'm doing smallest to biggest debt. And that way, when I pay off the small ones, I can use the money that was going toward that monthly payment toward paying off the next bill faster. The next page has a timeline estimate of paying off those bills. So what do I wanna pay off in January? What am I gonna pay off in February, etc.? The next page has my estimated income after the payoff. So after I pay off the bills in January and I don't have those monthly payments anymore, how much extra money does that give me that I can then roll over into paying the other payments or put into savings? Okay, now I can start showing you pages again. So I have one page, This that first section was all accounting for my finances and what my numbers are. The next section is all about the low by year and why I wanna do that and what the rules that I've set for myself are. So the first page, this will help keep me motivated, is benefits of a low by year. I'm gonna read these to you. One, don't waste, I don't waste time window shopping, whether in person or online. Online is where I spend most of my window shopping, wasting time. And a lot of the times I'm only doing that to look for something to want. You guys do that too, don't you? Like there's not really anything I need right now, but I wanna buy something. So you go and look and find something to want to buy. Not a good habit. Number two, there's no need to make buying decisions because the answer is almost always no not buying it because it's a low buy year. Number three, learn how to use and love what you already have, like this lovely notebook, like the handbags and accessories I already have. Number four, become more in touch with what you really need to feel happy and fulfilled. I'm already pretty in touch with that. I just really like those pretty things, but one of the things that I did in preparation for this was go back to 2019, categorize my expenses and see what I spent in each category each month, like for food or handbags, and it can be pretty shocking when you go back and look at the numbers that way because you could think wow that money could have gone into savings especially the numbers that I have spent on groceries and restaurants it's ridiculous I was shocked that I spent that much money on food number five learn more about advertising I heard this from one of the youtubers I watched when you're not buying anything you can see advertising in a different way you can see it like from a third-party perspective an outsider's perspective rather than the perspective of the target audience so instead of seeing something and saying oh I want that you can see more like trends in what's being advertised or ways that things are being advertised ways that they're trying to make you think that you need something when you really don't number six we've talked about this I'd be able to save more pay off the little debts that I have and feel more financially secure by having those savings. And number seven, more time for other things instead of shopping. And then I have rules for my no buy year. These are general rules and then I get more specific over the next few pages. Number one, create and follow lists of what I'm allowed to buy. This is the next few pages, allowed to replace, buy in moderation or with restrictions and what I'm not allowed to buy this year. Number two, cancel expenses that aren't necessities like the Hulu account, the subscription boxes. Number three, on a calendar and or a budget, indicate income and known expenses. So I've done that in this book. Number four, budget income in advance and earmark any extra money for savings. So I'm already good about making budgets. I've done this for years and years. I'd have an Excel spreadsheet. So that will go along with this notebook. But I also, for each month or prior to each month, wanna indicate the income that I'm expecting that month, the expenses I'm expecting that month. So the bills, the debt payments, but also groceries, toiletries, dog food, upcoming events that I may need to spend money on. And then whatever is left, I go ahead and mark that for transfer, immediate transfer to the savings account instead of it just hanging out there and being like, oh, what could I buy with that? Number five, we talked about this, transfer $50 per paycheck into savings. Rule number six, bonus money goes directly into savings. Number seven, make a list of all the things I would have purchased that month with the prices in order to keep track of what I've saved that month. Number eight, set rewards for hitting certain milestones. Indicate what the milestones are, or what I expect they might be, maybe price limits for the milestones or what kinds of rewards, like maybe it's a, it's not a reward that involves spending money, that would be ideal. Nine, a lot of people talk about in their rules what to do if they get a gift card or if they accept other gifts. For me, since this is about savings, it's not about gift cards and buying things. Like a lot of people do this for minimalism too. They wanna reduce, declutter, 
their space. That's not what I'm doing this for. It's about savings. So I have no problem accepting gifts. Number 10, um, I'll accept products from companies that contact me and they want to send me a product in exchange for a video. I get that stuff all the time, almost daily. Most of it I do not accept. I only accept a few here and there that apply to this channel and things that I'm really interested in that I think you might be really interested in. Number 11, use what you already have. Number 12, before buying non-essentials, ask myself if I would rather have that money in a savings account. Like just yesterday, there were some earrings that I'd been following on Fashion File that came up for sale again. They're Gucci earrings, they are gorgeous, and they're $385. I've wanted those earrings for a while now. I really love them. I know that I love them and would get a lot of joy out of them and would wear them often and for many years. I know that that would be a good buy for me, but I asked myself, would I rather have the earrings or would I rather have that almost $400 in my savings account? And right now with my savings goals, I would rather have it in my savings account. So no earrings. And rule number 13, track my no buy and low buy days. And I'll show you how I'm doing that. The next two pages have things I'm allowed to buy and things I'm allowed to replace. So I'm allowed to buy healthcare expenses and medicine, animal expenses like food, healthcare, and medicine, um, my domain name renewals. I'm allowed to put money toward the debts. I'm allowed to get my Red Cross CPR certification that's required for work. I'm allowed to go to the art teachers conference, pay the membership fees and dues for that, but only in years that they are in Galveston where I don't have to travel and have a lot of extra travel expenses. And I'm allowed to do vehicle maintenance. So those are the necessities that I came up with. And I decided to put these categories on each page, like on their own page so that I can add to that because I'm not going to think of everything right up front. I'm allowed to replace toiletries, recycling bags that we use. Um, I'm allowed to renew our Costco membership because that's where we buy laundry detergent and toilet paper and some food and we save money by doing that. And I'm allowed to buy new equipment that I need for YouTube or for work if it breaks. Like I'm expecting my computer is not going to last all that much longer. That's a big expense, but I need a computer. The next two have allowed in moderation or with restrictions and not allowed to buy. So moderation or restrictions, one, groceries. Like I said, I tracked my spending from last year on food. It was ridiculous. Like I, didn't, I haven't tracked the whole year yet because it was taking a long time. So I wanted to focus on some other priorities first. But like in February and March of last year, each month I spent almost a thousand dollars on food. Most of that was eating out at restaurants. That is insane. And that doesn't even include what the boyfriend spent because we split costs. So that was like some of what we spent. So we decided that it would be best if we try to set a limit to the amount of money that we can spend. Maybe not so much the number of times we can go to restaurants. And that's part of my problem too, is that I love going out to eat. That's one of the only thing, I'm a homebody. It's one of the only things I go out to do. I really don't even go window shopping very much but restaurants, I love it, but they can be very expensive. Even a place that's not very expensive because you're tipping, you may get a drink with your meal. It adds up fast, clearly. So we decided to start with a limit of 200 a month per person, so 400 between us, and see if we can stay within that budget. And if we can't, we're allowed to raise it to maybe 300 a person, but we really need to keep that in control, clearly. Number two, restaurants, very limited. I can go out with friends. I don't do that very often. I'm actually going out with a friend today who I see about once, maybe twice a month, and we always go to lunch or dinner. That's allowed because it's a rare thing and it's what we do. But otherwise, I need to figure out restaurant rules a little more, whether it's just staying within that food budget or if I limit it to a certain amount that I can spend on restaurants for a month. Number three, spending on alcohol. So we will go a couple times a year and do a big wine run at one of the stores and buy you know, a case of wine and that costs a few hundred dollars. So we need to start getting cheaper ones. We already don't get very expensive ones, but just pay more attention to that. We don't drink very often at home anyway. So this really isn't a big deal, but it is something that we could cut back a little on. 
and where we could cut back the most I think is drinks at restaurants that's where you spend too much money on alcohol number four YouTube and luxury expenses those go hand in hand don't they so things like handbags accessories and even books that relate to luxury and this channel I haven't come up with rules for those yet but I know that I need to not buy as much of them this year as I have in the last few years what I'm not allowed to buy is jewelry but I've made an exception to this I have wanted for a while now um, Jill Maurer, I'll link her website below where she sells her jewelry. She's a jewelry designer and a YouTuber. I'll link her YouTube channel too. She has a necklace that I want. It's a 17 inch her Durham necklace and that's been on my wish list for a while and I want a ring from her probably the rift or the palisade that's been on my list for a while too and those are things that I really do want to purchase this year and I would rather have the items than have them in savings because I just really want them that bad. So that's the one jewelry thing or the two jewelry things that I can purchase this year. Nothing else. No clothes or shoes. I have plenty of those. No blankets. I have a lot of those too. I am though expecting a cause box sometime this month and that might have a blanket in it. So getting free stuff, well, it's not free. I paid for it back in November, December, but I got a good deal on it. But I can add things like that that come to me, but I can't go out and buy new ones. Can't buy any housewares. I have plenty of those. There's nothing I need. Can't buy stationery and planner supplies. Now that is one that I often spend money on too. The exception to that, there are two exceptions. In my daily planner that I plan for work in YouTube, I switched that out around July to prep for the new school year. So that's a July to June calendar not a January to December calendar so I'm allowed to buy the new inserts for the next school year and also in my desk agenda I have a Stalogy notebook if I happen to fill that this year then I can replace it and buy a new one on the next pages I have my wish list and my giving plan I'm gonna go through my wish list in another video so I'll skip that right now now my giving plan what that means is buying gifts for other people this is a place where I overspend notoriously as well. I love gifting things to other people. I love shopping and coming up with like a package, like a gift basket sort of, of items that are like themed. I, I just, I go really crazy and overboard with gift giving. So that's a place where I need to rein myself in and have some rules in place. I don't, I haven't flushed that all out yet, but I have look for no cost and low cost alternatives. I actually did some of this for Christmas gifts. I did some handmade things in addition to purchased gifts. And budget a spending limit for people's birthdays and for Christmas. So I can only spend a certain amount total or a certain amount per person. The next pages have challenges in a low buy year and things I can do in a low buy year. So the challenges that I expect to face, and I haven't completed this section yet, but this is what I have so far. What do I do when I want to get out of the apartment, when I'm feeling like stir crazy? And then I need to answer these questions. I haven't done that yet. What do I do when I feel the need to eat out instead of eating at home? When I need to go to a restaurant but I know I shouldn't. What should I do? How do I stop myself? What do I do when there's something I come across that I really want to buy? What do I do when there's an occasion coming up that I feel obligated to spend money on? Whether it's an event I'm going to with other people or like a birthday where I feel obligated to buy a present. Things I can do on a low buy year that don't cost money. I can work on YouTube. That's the bulk of what I do anyway. I can read. I don't have to buy books. I can go to a library down the street. I can write. I can draw. Those are things I need to do more of. I can clean and declutter. I can listen to podcasts while I'm doing that. I can watch YouTube, of course, Netflix. I don't pay for the Netflix account, the boyfriend does. I canceled Hulu because we only ever use it to watch A Handmaid's Tale. We can always re-up it just for that and then cancel it again. I can use the amenities in our building that I never use. Our pool, our hot tub, we have pool tables. We have a gym I've never used. There are pretty places where I could sit outside to draw, watch the dogs in the dog park, sit by the reflection pond. I can take the dogs for a walk in our beautiful neighborhood. I can go to free museum and gallery events. I can go to meetup groups. I used to do that years ago. I can take free classes, learn something new. So that's all the resource information that I wanted to have in the front of the book. And now we get into the data, the tracking, the daily stuff. So I have these calendar pages. I showed you these in the previous video. I actually cut these calendar pages out of this other planner here. 
and they have these tabs that say the month on them. So I've got the calendar there where I can see the whole month at a glance. I have my paydays indicated with payday stickers and on each day I'm writing no buy or low buy, whatever ended up happening that day. So no buys are days where I didn't spend any money. Low buys are days where I spent a little like necessities. I'll also put on this calendar other sources of income when they come in so I can track those dates, days when I move money into savings, days when bills are due, all that stuff that can be put on a calendar will go here. On the next two pages, I have expenses. So at the top, I have the date of the two paydays for January, and then I have columns for expenses. So what the expense is like AT&T, the payment amount, the due date, the balance that I owe, if there is one, the available balance, credit, whatever, if there is any, whether it's been paid and then there's a little room for other notes. So both of those paydays are right there. And then the last thing that I have in the planner so far is the end of month settlement. So what this is, is sometimes I'll make purchases for the household, sometimes the boyfriend makes purchases for the household, and at the end of the month, we settle up. So we add up for each of us what we've spent, we write those numbers down, we divide them in half, so whatever he spent, I owe half of, what I spent, he owes half of, and then we figure out who owes who, whatever the total is. And then I have things I would have purchased in January. So like yesterday, those Gucci earrings from fashion file. I probably would have bought those if I wasn't doing the low buy year. And then the day before that, I got new tires put on my car, which didn't count as an expense for me because my mother paid for those as a Christmas present. We were waiting at the tire place and right next door was this Mexican restaurant that we've been wanting to try. If I hadn't been on this low buy year, then we would have gone there and eaten and spent probably 30 to $50 a person. We would have gotten an appetizer and an entree each and one or two drinks and maybe even a dessert but we didn't. So whatever I would have spent there, I saved instead. And I'll have a column over here to put what I've saved for that month by not spending. And then the rest of it is blank. So what I plan to do is work through this month and see if there are any other pages that I might want to add to the month section. And then once that month is over, then I will start the monthly section over again. So I'll put the February month on two pages and then I'll have the two paydays for February and then I'll have the settlement and the what I would have purchased for February and then anything else I might have come up with. But I think you can see from this detailed example that when you have a goal in mind, this, this shows you the whole process that I've talked about in the last two videos. This is the product of that process. So once I have this plan in place for the year, this will help me keep on track. This is easy for me to go back and reference things in the beginning of the book. It's easy for me to go back and track things on the calendar, write things down, here, remember what I need to write down, and that will help me stay on track, follow through with my plan, stay motivated for my plan, review it, and ultimately, fingers crossed, be successful with my plan. Become more of that ideal self that I want to be, have more money in savings, all those benefits of doing this, feel more secure, fall back in love with things I already have. This is how I'll do it. This is the end of this little three-part video series about planning and organizing for your year. Now I'm gonna get back into videos about luxury handbags and accessories, which is what most of you are here for. So if those are all things you're interested in, please make sure you are subscribed and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you back next time. Bye.